Okay, so I think I have literally reviewed you guys to death. <laughs> I'm not lying. I think there's a couple things I want to touch on on this ad puzzle, but to be honest, I think you guys are ready to roll come uh, Tuesday next week. But if it helps you to watch the homework video I did, go for it. If it helps you to um, kind of look at the Desmos homework and look over this ad puzzle and do it again, I think you can. I think you can at least look the video. And if you can't, remember, this is how you type my name. And by the way, I have a YouTube channel. So this actual video that's a part of the ad puzzle will be on YouTube. And then there's an ad puzzle where I take this actual YouTube video and put it into the ad puzzle. So you could watch this video again on YouTube. All right. You guys know what YouTube is. You're, many of you are obsessed with it. So we know it's where it connects. But guess what? What if it connected in a different spot? You know, what if it was right in the middle of this spot here? So then it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be nine. What if it was right in between here? It would be 9.5, okay? What if it was right in here? That would be gnarly. What would that be? That would be in between 50 and 55, which would be 52 and a half. And that would be in between 9 and 10, which would be 9.5. So understand, what if the line connected there? You could still figure it out and estimate. And that might happen on the benchmark. I'm not just saying this stuff for my health, right? You should know what to do here. You know that we're plugging this stuff in. We did this in our notebook. Understand the negative. So you're going to plug all of this in where Y is. You guys should be good there. We're kind of just going over the ad puzzle today. This one was just trying to make sure you remember that when both sides equal the same thing, if you combine those two, you're also going to get 3x plus 4. When both sides are the same, it's infinite, right? That ends up being 0x equals 0. If you don't realize why I get 0x equals 0, keep solving the equation. And what happens when you move this over, you move that over, you get 0x. You move this over, you get 0. And when you get 0x equals 0, it's infinite. But what if this was not 4? What if this was 5? or six or seven or anything else but four. Then you would have gotten three X plus four equals three X plus five. Wait a minute, you would move this over, zero X, okay, I know it's either no solution or infinite, equals one. What times zero, what in this world times zero equals one? Nothing. So when the constants aren't the same, it's no solution. And you know this. I'm just going over it with you guys, okay? This is kind of a confusing one. Why don't I actually do this one with you guys again? You're going to take this and put it here. Oh, yeah, this is kind of messing up my computer. So you're going to have 4x plus 2. And then you're going to bring this 2x plus 6 equals 2. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and negative 4x plus 12 equals 12. You know, again, we're solving a system, so we haven't really talked about this one yet. But I still gave it to you just to see how you would how would you approach it when you see something. You know what certain things mean, but you were kind of like questioning yourself when you were doing it. And you actually get this 0x equals 0. So this answer is infinite. Whatever number you put in for X or Y, it doesn't matter. Every number in the world will work. And you can try it out if you want. It will. What if I said X and Y were 2, 2? What's 2 here? That would be negative 4 and 2 here. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2. What if this is 2 and 2? 4 times 2 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4. Does that equal 12? It does, and that answer works. Every answer in the world would work on that one. All right, you guys know what to do here. Don't mess this up. All right, it's a system. Set it up properly. All right, if you forgot how to set it up, it's $50 per week plus 200 equals 25 per week plus 300. And you would solve that system. Oh, let's just make sure we know this closely and well. We're going to start at negative 5. Okay, 
Negative 5 is our y-intercept. If you forgot about the vocab, it's important to understand. That's called the y-intercept. That's where it intercepts or touches the y. What y? The y-axis, all right? And then negative x is actually, I would have this guy. I think it was a little bit here. Negative 1 over 1. Oh, man, this thing is really close to Negative 1 over 1. That's what negative x equals, because there's a negative 1 invisible right there. So you're going to go down 1 over 1, and you're going to get this point here. Then you're going to go ahead and draw a straight line. But guess what? You get to be fancy with it. Why do you get to do that? Because this is greater than, not greater than or equal to. And then, after all that, I'm going to take my eraser. After all that, plug in 0, 0, and see if it works. 0 here. Um, and then, I mean, sometimes this part of my problem, for some reason, the part of my computer just wants to glitch out right here. This cancels out because it's 0. And negative 5. Is 0 greater than negative 5? Nope. So you don't shade over zero, zero. All right. We went over this one in class. Okay. Hopefully you remember this one in class. If you don't, let's go over it quickly. Let's do this first one. Negative two. Down one over one. Straight line. This one is less than. We're going to go ahead and plug in zero, zero. See, does it work? Is 0 less than or equal to negative 2? No, 0 is not less than. So we don't shade over the 0. We don't do it. We shade the opposite. Similar to the last one we just did. All right? And then, let's go ahead and do the other one. We're going to go ahead and graph this one. Positive 2. We're going to go down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1. Straight line tool here. Plug in zero, zero again. All right. And then just make sure you understand, does zero, is it greater than or equal to two? No, zero is not greater. So you're not going to, you're not going to shade over the zero, zero. That's not going to happen. It's wrong. So you're going to shade on the other side. And your answer is going to be right in that little piece. We did it today. This is your answer. Okay. Seems kind of crazy, but that's how it goes. All right. You guys know this is x to the 12th. Right? Because we're adding. Okay. Go ahead and try this one. If this is your answer, you can change it to 1 over 2 the third is a final answer, okay? You can't keep it negative. Same idea here. Don't forget. I know that was fast. Pay attention. All right, your negatives can't stay there. This guy can't stay here. He's got to go up. Oh, my God. I know. It's difficult. My computer is pain right now. A to the fifth. It gets added. This B, same thing. It comes down. It gets added. So it's no longer here. It's no longer here. A11 on top. C4. B7 on the bottom. What if I said x to the 15th square root? What will that equal? Remember, it's going to be all over 2. I know it seems weird. You just put it over 2. All right, what about this guy? 
What are you going to do in this one? Common like terms, right? We did this one in class. So you're going to multiply that by three. I wish my computer was at a little better right now up here. Multiply this, so you're going to get x9 to the 15th times x1 over 15. As you keep working, you're going to get You're going to add these. But this can get reduced. You divide both sides by 5. OK. Other than that, OK, you guys know how to do this. If you need help with this, you can reach out and ask. But I don't really need to go with anything. This is just a good review. Again, you guys are ready. I think you guys are going to do great on Tuesday.